There are a lot of paid Windows optimizers out there but just like you I'm kind of broke so I scoured the internet to find a tool that was not only free but actually good too. That's when I came across this tool called Sticks Optimizer. Oh so expensive. So we're gonna just skip the premium options cause I don't recommend buying any of these and go to the free download page. Unlock peak performance in your game. That's a bold claim. Let's download it and see if it can really live up to it. There will be some pretty interesting benchmarks at the end. So after downloading it from the website, I ran the utility as an admin so we can utilize all of its utilities. Right at the start, it just exposes how broke you are for using a Pudero PC like this i7-6700 with the RX 580 that I'm using. But what we are more concerned with is this view code option which takes you to the GitHub page. So I'm just gonna join this code and show it to you side by side. Also when you use the utility, it downloads these resources and tools that it will be used using for the optimization inside of your C drive. Let's start with the tweaks tab. Optimize windows. This option as it says will optimize the windows settings ranging from power saving to visual effects. And in the code of it we can see everything that it does. So it's basically going to disable thread DPC and fault tolerance heap, increase the CPU and input output priority for the csrss.exe, disables dynamic tick and IO latency cap across different services, enables game mode and hags and does a bunch of other power management settings, more specifically turning off power saving features. And everything else that it does will be on screen right now. Some of these settings are quite questionable but nothing that will harm the performance so far. Then there's the optimized kernel option which will make changes to the core of the operating system and is for Windows 11 only. If we take a look at the code, it changes some settings related to the DPC watchdog profile offset, max dynamic tick duration and the minimum DPC rate. So these will impact the system latency and not the FPS per se. I'm just gonna skip this one. Optimize memory. This will adjust the memory management to ensure efficient resource utilization. It will basically disable clearing the page file at shutdown so your system can shut down faster, enable large system cache, reset non-page pool quota as well as the size and disables memory compression. Enable hags. This will enable the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling which allows the GPU to manage its own memory and task scheduling. This can reduce latency and improve performance in GPU intensive applications. Set up TSC plus TSC. This forces Windows to update your system timer every 1 ms instead of the default 15.6 to 5 ms. So it's basically the timer resolution software built into it. And looking at the code, yeah I was right. It allows the Windows to use a dynamic tick behavior instead of the forced platform tick. Optimize storage disks. Optimizing your storage will improve performance and disable useless checks. No way does optimizing something improve performance. Just wow. So this one is basically doing some minor NTFS drive changes to save a little bit of latency here and there. Adjust power settings. This will disable some power saving features within windows and improve performance like it will disable the low power idle modes, disable hibernation, unpox all CPU cores and disable CPU C states, imports a custom power plan and also opens the power options menu so we can select that power plan. Optimize Nvidia GPU. So it basically blocks a lot of NVIDIA driver telemetry and reporting services to prevent data collection and also applies a custom NVIDIA profile for optimal NVIDIA control panel settings. Then there's the optimized Radeon GPU. Disables various AMD GPU power saving features like ULPS or the ultra low power state mode, UVD clock gating etc ensuring that the GPU runs at full power. Next one is the network tab. Disable power saving features on network adopter to reduce latency. Then this one will apply these whole bunch of changes basically going through the internet adopter and changes the settings that are usually under the advanced tab so that it can optimize the network speeds and reduce ping. Disable NetBIOS. NetBIOS over TCP slash IP is an old networking protocol mostly used for legacy network communication. Disabling it can improve security and also reduce unnecessary network traffic. Disable LM host lookup. This will reduce the reliance on the LM host file for name resolution which can help in improving network security but not really the performance. Setup QoS policy allows your router to prioritize network packet towards a specific application. And looking at the code, in this case it will be Fortnite. So it's basically going to set up a policy named Fortnite policy and then it will mark the network packets as high priority and low latency. So sure, let's turn it on. Moving on to the debloat tab, disable startup apps will basically run the auto runs program where you can disable any app, task or service from starting up 
with Windows, which can actually improve performance by quite a bit. Quick tip, if it doesn't start automatically, you can run it manually from the C drive too. Disable Hyper-V. It's going to disable all of the hyper virtualization services, so if you use Hyper-V VMs, then they are no longer going to work. Disable Bluetooth. Uninstall useless apps will uninstall a lot of bloatware that comes with the Windows install, and the apps that it will uninstall are all on screen, so you can pause the video and take a look for yourself. Yep, there's way too much junk on a clean Windows install. Useless features will disable useless features like remote access to registry, Windows remote management, scheduled tasks, and even sysmain, which is also known as superfetch. Disable Microsoft Store is pretty self-explanatory. Disabling telemetry will run a program called O and O Shut Up 10, which I have actually covered in many of my past videos since it's such a useful app. So it's going to use that to disable a ton of telemetry or spy services by Microsoft that collect data. Some of those are actually shown on screen right now. And yeah, Microsoft has pretty much all of your data. So finally, let's look at the benchmarks. Starting with my own benchmarks, I decided to benchmark the God of War 2018, repeating a similar route and here are the results. Well, the footage got corrupted somehow so here is only the screenshots. But from the actual benchmark results, you can see that the results are not spectacular or anything but it's still an improvement. Now here is the interesting part. So these are the benchmarks of an older version of this utility by Corvi which shows much more improvement than my own. As you can see that not only has the average FPS improved but also the 1 percentile and the 0.2 isn't really an accurate measure but we can clearly see the improvement there as well. Next are the Valorant benchmarks and it's pretty much the same here, however compared to the average FPS improvement, the 1% lows and the 0.2% see a much more significant improvement. So take these benchmarks with a grain of salt and don't expect too much. Oh and there's one more very important thing that I wanna tell you, 